So let's start to look how we can create these nice mini sidebars at the right side of the chart area or scale in Chart.js 4. So let's start to look how to add sidebars on the right side of the scale in Chart.js 4. So we want to put it in here. So the first thing what we need to do is we need to make sure we have our boiler template, which you can find here on Chart.js3.com getting started. This link you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here, just copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. Next, if you want to support my channel, check out my Patreon page. So what we're going to do here is we're going to scroll down here and let's make this space here immediately. So I'm going to scroll down and then in the options, I'm going to say enter and then I'm going to say here, uh, layout. And I'm going to say here padding. And then I want to pinpoint specifically the right side. And we're going to say here, maybe a 50 pixel padding. And as you can see here, once I refresh, we have this space here working nicely. So what I want to do now is I want to add up here some um, horizontal bars. And basically this is maybe not always practical for a bar chart like this, but if you have a stock chart, that was a specific request related to stock charts, this is probably more practical. To do this, I will add up here some values. So we have something. And what I want to do is I want to make these bar values based on whatever we have here. We have here some numbers. So what I'm going to say here, if I want to put in some values, let's put in an array, let's say here a volume or something like that. Make an array and let's say the first one will be one, the other one will be three, six, and then maybe here we have uh, seven, nine, 10 and 12. And a total of seven items, exactly same as here above. All right. So then what I'm going to do, if I save this, nothing happens here and I get this thing, ignore that. What I want to do now is start to draw these items here. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, in the options here, I'm going to say here or yeah, after the options, I'm going to say plugins. And in the plugins, I'm going to say here sidebar or something like that. You can give it anything you want, but that will be my plugin name. Let's say here the sidebar plugin. And then I'm going to say here constant sidebar equals. Then we're going to say here uh, the ID will be equal to sidebar comma and then we're going to when are we going to draw this we're going to say this after the data sets we will draw this item I only need the parameter chart arguments or args and the plugin options or plugins so it doesn't matter I will not use these two so it doesn't matter at all so the next thing what I want to do is I want to do an object destructuring and if you don't know what's object destructuring Please watch my other video in the description box, Understanding Chart.js Object Destructuring. Very, very important. So what I need here is a CTX because I want to draw on the canvas. Secondly, I probably will be needing the data. And then finally, we have here the chart area. And then specifically because we want to make sure that it will be written on this side of the chart area, which is the right side. And then finally, or you know, this is the official finally, it's the skills. And then I need here Basically the Y scale, that's more than enough. All right, we have this now. And I, what, I, what I want to do now is to say ctx.save. So give us a command to start saving all the variables and then start drawing. So now what I want to do is I want to start creating a simple shape and afterwards we're going to put them all of them in here, or at least not these, but we're going to put in here seven items specifically. So we're going to say here, ctx, and then we're going to say begin path indicating that we're going to create a new shape that should be independent of anything else. Next, what I want to do here is give it a line. Let's say a line width equals one pixel for now. So we want to have the borderline of a thickness of one pixel. Next, I want to say we're going to have a stroke style and the stroke style is basically the border color. We, we can get this one here or this one here, but I'll get it later on. For now, I'll make it simple. I'm going to say string value black. So it will be a black color. So once I have this here, I'm going to say ctx.fill style. And fill style will be the same here. Uh, let's make this blue for now. This is a string value as well. So once I did this, we have all of this saved that refresh. All right, nothing happens yet. The reason why nothing happens is basically we need to make sure we have the command to draw. So what I'm going to say here, ctx.stroke to draw the borderlines. 
And of course, sorry, my bad. I realized I forgot to put in the coordinates. So let's do that later on first. So then what I'm going to say here is ctx.rect because I want to create a rectangle and a rectangle has four variables, the x value, the y value, the width, and the height. And then what I want to do here is the following. So we have here the starting point of the x and one, this is here basically the starting point of the y. So basically where I want to start on the x point is here and this here is what we call the chart area right side and that's of course what we have here ready so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in here then we have here the y and the y uh, is one of these heights here for now I'm just going to put in a value so I'm going to say here y dot get pixel for value and we make sure that this is spelled correctly and let's say number one and then we have here the width and the width could be let's say 20 pixels and then the height will be 10 pixels so if I save this refresh you can see here now we're getting something so what we're going to do now is add up some color put it in the proper position because right now we have number one and number one is here you can see here if you look very carefully this bar here starts at number one and then goes and start to draw below so what I want to do is I want to put it in the center here. So let's play around with that. We know that here we have here, this is the width and this is the height. So that will mean that if this is the height of 10 pixels, the center would be between the two. So I'm going to say here the right side, or then, uh, sorry, and this one here, because it's related to the height. And you can say a minus five pixels. By doing that, I'm pushing it up. There we are. And you'll see more clear if you're on number two. Because number two will match that line. Let's save that. Refresh. There you are. Exactly in the center here. Perfect. So what I want to do now is let's fill up the color here. So we have a stroke style. Fill style is blue. But it doesn't color yet. And the reason why is I need to say ctx.fill. Save. Refresh. All right. This works. What I want to do now is I want to get the colors from here. But I want to have as well these uh for every bar, I want to put it in here with fluctuating width or length and then different values here. What I will do is I'll just get here the items and I realize I have here numbers, but let's make one or did I make this already? Uh, I'll just use this here. So we have these numbers here. These numbers should reflect and then based on whatever the numbers of the volume, this will move up or down. So let's play around with this and uh, i guess we can do it in here what i want to do here and this is the reason why we have the data so you can use here data dot and i'm going to say here data sets index zero and then we can say here what i want is for um i guess for the volume dot for each so we're going to use here a for each loop and i'm going to say here each value and index and we do here a function error expression and what I want to do is I want to cut this out and put it in here give this a proper indentation save that refresh of course we see nothing here because what I need to do is here the value should be converted in here save there we are so now we have multiple items here can we give it some proper length we can by basically adding it here in this one here the length what I can do here I'll just say here default of let's say 10 pixels plus whatever the value is. Put it in there. Now we have fluctuating uh, length of these sidebars. Finally, how do we get the colors? For example, I want these colors here instead of this static color. Well, we have here the data here. This data gives us basically access to everything here. So what I'm going to say, let's say for the stroke style, I'll say data dot data sets index zero dot and let's say here uh, border color and the border color will say index and the index will be or the value will be based on this index here so if i save that refresh now you can see here these colors what i want to do is just oh to make sure it is visible i'm going to copy this put it all in here and i'm going to say here, instead of border color we're going to say here background color save refresh 
And now we have these matching background colors here. Absolutely phenomenal. And I guess this is basically how you can create this sidebar here with more and more additional indicating or indicators.